Hello. Hugo culture seems to be a word on everyone's lips at the moment, especially if you're into gardening. It's a bit like permaculture and no dig gardening. And because I've heard the word Hugo culture so many times of late, I've gone away and done some research to try and understand what it's all about. And the first thing I learned is, although Hugo culture seems very now, it's very trendy and fashionable, it's actually been going on for hundreds of years. There's nothing new under the sun. And Hugo culture as a way of gardening is certainly not a new thing. So this video will be a beginner's guide to Hugo culture. And I'll type all my findings in the description box below this video. And whilst I'm talking to you, I'm going to make some Hugo culture bulk bag raised beds. Now, strictly speaking, this is not Hugo culture because Hugo culture will be built directly onto the earth. But the principles are very similar. So you can apply these principles to a proper Hugo culture mound. Hugo culture is a word of German origin and it means hill culture or mound culture. Culture in this context means the earth. So it basically means a mound of earth or a hill of earth. There are many benefits to the Hugo culture technique, which I'll share with you in this video. There are also some simple mistakes that people make, and I'll share those too. Now, traditionally, to make a Hugo culture mound, you would dig a trench in the earth, fill it full of various garden waste, and then bury it with soil, and then plant into the soil on the top. And I'm not going to do that precisely, because I'm going to use these leftover bolt bags to create raised beds, but I'm going to follow the same principles, and that will allow me to talk you through some of the benefits and show you how to make a Hugo culture mound. The first thing I've done is cleared a patch of earth. I've removed all the gravel and the weed fabric because I want the base of the bolt bag to have direct contact with the earth because this soil already contains billions of microorganisms which will accelerate the process inside the Hugo culture bulk bag raised beds. The next thing I did was turn the bags inside out so that the advertising is on the inside. And I'm doing this in the corner of my compound, out of sight really, because these are not particularly attractive. But by turning them inside out and putting the advertising on the inside, it just makes it slightly more uniform. After that, I've cut some holes in the bottom here using my soldering iron. And that's so that when I fill these bolt bags with the Hugo culture medium, there will be an interface with the earth below and that will allow exchange of microorganisms between the contents of the bulk bag and the earth. And as I hope you can see here, I haven't cut away the whole of the base. I've just made three small holes and that will help it to retain its structural integrity, but will also allow a pathway between the contents of the bulk bags directly into the earth below. Now let me talk you through a few of the ingredients. The first layer of the Hugo culture bulk bag will be made up of logs. A collection of hardwood and softwood, various different sizes. Some has already started to decay. And this will form the base layer of the Hugo culture raised bed. Or if you're making a mound, that will be at the bottom of the trench. The benefit of this is that it's a huge carbon store. So all that carbon in that wood is locked up into the earth and eventually will be taken up into the plants. But for now, it's sealed away. If you were to burn that, all that carbon would be released into the atmosphere. And then in time, as the process of decay and decomposition takes place, this solid hard wood will become soft and permeable and it will act as a sponge and retain water at the bottom of the bulk bag, at the roots of the plant where it's needed most. So, not only is it initially a carbon store, eventually it's a water store, a reservoir. Because this is so high and dense in carbon, I need to add some other ingredients to the mix to balance it out and accelerate the process of decay. So the next layer of the Hugo culture mound, or bulk bag in my case, will be this. And this is a mixture of cuttings and clippings from the garden. And it's got twigs and it's got leaves. 
the twigs will have carbon or a higher proportion of carbon and the leaves will have a higher proportion of nitrogen and when you put those things together with some water and some oxygen which will be in the air pockets and billions of soil organisms the miraculous process of decay will begin i'm also going to add to this layer some cardboard but not glossy printed cardboard plain brown cardboard high in carbon and that will break down and to balance the carbon from the cardboard i will add some fresh grass cuttings and these are particularly good because they're high in nitrogen and they've got a high moisture content but it's also important that everything is balanced all things in moderation not too much of any one thing because that will upset the balance of the Hugo culture mound clearly we can't plant directly into this it's far too open and medium it needs to break down a bit and become compost or soil so on top of this layer I'm going to add a layer of old sods and these are the turfs which I dug out of the ground when I created my exotic border and I've been keeping them on one side for this particular purpose what's brilliant about these is it's a mixture of soil carbon nitrogen and there'll already be billions of soil organisms in each and every one of these turfs and as I move and displace these turfs I can actually see invertebrates and worms and insects and that whole life cycle is part of the decomposition process which will help now this is still not a good medium to plant into and the grass in that still needs to break down but on top of that and this will be the medium that i'm able to plant into after some good topsoil so we've effectively shown you how to do it now let me demonstrate it in practice and whilst i'm doing that i'll share some more of the benefits of hugo culture and some of the simple mistakes that you need to avoid if you're going to make a hugo culture mound so in go some logs large and small a variety of shapes and sizes old new this one is already well on the way to decomposition hardwood and softwood i've got cherry and plum and i'm just packing it in at the bottom and don't worry about the gaps between because that will soon be filled in with the green waste as it breaks down Here's an old conifer, which I took out of a pot, which I no longer want. Not too much coniferous material because it's quite acidic. An additional benefit for me of this Hugo culture approach is it's a great way of getting rid of your garden waste and it saves you going to the tip with all this rubbish or filling up your green wheelie bin. So in a sense, I guess we are reducing waste miles this is locking carbon in and stopping it from being released into the atmosphere it will feed the plants eventually and in the meantime it will decay and decompose and become porous and absorb water and become a store of water now for some green and brown garden waste and some cardboard which will go on top you could actually include some kitchen waste like potatoes i've got some potatoes and some celery in the fridge and i'll bring them out and put them in so in go these old spuds and these are at the bottom so don't worry about these growing because they're going to be buried too deep and even if they start to shoot and grow a little bit they will eventually die and just add to the mix some celery some cardboard which I'm going to tear up into smaller pieces. It's easier to mix in. This is pure brown cardboard without tape, without any glossy printing on it. Next, some of the garden waste, which I've been saving. It's a real mixture of all kinds of different things and it's all mixed in together. I've got holly bush, I've got olive plants, I've got tachycarpus leaves, there's some tree roots, there's some weeds and these all go in there second layer from the bottom and the fact that that is solid wood at the bottom 
and that some of this is actually woody is a benefit because that means it will slow down the decomposition process and it will release food into the soil for years to come so i should in theory with a little bit of feeding and top dressing be able to use this raised bed for years to come for various crops some more branches some leaves some thorn twigs that i pruned off the roses and all this is a great mix of carbon and nitrogen and there'll be oxygen in the air pockets and there'll be hydrogen in the moisture in the water and all these little organisms will start working on this and digesting it and in the process of digesting it they'll turn this into compost and plant food at the bottom of the raised bed not forgetting these grass cuttings put them on top and turn them in and they will really accelerate the whole process and will add to the moisture content of the raised bed and as i shake it they're filtering through the gaps and falling down the next ingredient will be the turfs which i saved from my recent garden project but before i put those on top i'm going to water this in because the turfs may act as a cap and prevent moisture from getting to this layer. So I'm going to water this layer before I cap it off. Another one of the benefits of the Hugel culture approach is that as the decomposition process starts to take place, it will produce heat. And that heat will feed into the soil above. So the average soil temperature in your Hugel culture mound or raised bed in this case, should be higher than the surrounding ground that might give you the advantage of a couple of extra growing months so the next part of the process will be to apply these turfs i'd apply them grass side down that way they'll definitely get less light and even as i pick one up i can see there's a worm in it can you see there on top a lovely worm there and that's just one of the many soil organisms which are ready to start work on my Hugel culture raised bed. He can go in my raised bed now where he's lovely and safe. Soil in, grass side down. And I'll just go ahead and cover this with a layer of lovely turfs, which is a mixture of soil nitrogen rich grass and billions and billions of soil organisms i learned recently when i was doing my log pile that there are three types of soil organisms and they all feed each other because the top layer is your things like worms and insects and bugs which chew things and digest them mechanically worms suck soil through and they excrete their poo and that's absorbed by the next layer things like springtails and consequently the next layer down which is your billions and billions of microbes and bacteria and fungi feed on the poo of the second layer so you've got a tiny little life cycle a food chain microscopic that you can't see with the naked eye taking place in the soil before our eyes and beneath our feet and a healthy soil should not be disturbed and I think I gather that that's what no dig gardening is all about you don't break in to the earth because the earth is effectively a living organism in itself so you leave it be and you top dress it and you plant into the top dressing but that's no dig gardening and that's the subject for another video. Let's concentrate on our Hugo culture mound for now. Now that's already starting to fill up quite nicely. I'll probably trim the top of the boat bag and imagine how much I would have had to spend on compost. So I'm saving myself a lot of money and getting rid of a load of garden waste as well as producing a crop. So it's a win-win-win situation for me. So again, between each layer, I'm giving it a good soak. Life needs water, and that's what we're doing here. We're creating a whole new bulk bag full of new life. It's called decomposition and decay. In my view, that's a misnomer. 
it should be called Rebirth. And as you can probably see, there's lots of crevices and gaps here, which would make it difficult to plant into directly. But those crevices and gaps are actually good to begin with because they will provide oxygen for the decomposition process. But it will fall down and become compacted and whilst this is almost full, probably in about six months, it will be only half full. I am going to trim the top of this to make it a bit tidier using my soldering iron. But on top of this now, to fill some of these gaps and make it easy to plant into, I'm going to put some topsoil. If you're anything like me, which is curious, you may be wondering how all that carbon rich nutrition taking place at the bottom of this bulk bag or at the bottom of any Hugo culture mound actually gets to the top. Well, the answer I found is pretty straightforward. The soil becomes a living organism, which is also inhabited by billions and billions of other living organisms. And as they move around the soil, and eat things and digest them and excrete them so that matter is mixed around and in fact as this falls and sags down into this bag it will become self-tilling what I mean by that is new pockets of undigested material will be exposed to air and all those microorganisms and that will then also start to release its food into the soil so that is how the nutrients move around the soil and I think that's one of the reasons why digging is frowned upon by so many exponents of no dig gardening because what you're actually doing is destroying that process that living organism which is your soil I'm just giving these tugs a bit of a shake and a pull Number one, to help it settle in, and number two, to pull the bag up. One of the things that I don't like about these bulk bags is all this excess at the top. I always find it gets in the way. So a good little hack for you, if ever you want to cut through material like this, and the same is true for heavy duty weed control membrane, use a soldering iron. It's as good as any heat gun, and it only costs about £15. And it just slices through, and it also seals at the same time. And that's what I'm going to do next. So there we go, Hugel culture and the Hugel culture bulk bag raised bed. One down, one more to go. A self tilling, self feeding, water retentive ecosystem in a bag that uses up all your garden waste. What more could you ask for? I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you found it informative. If you have, please do like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you have, thank you. Don't forget to hit the notifications bell so that you find out about my forthcoming videos and one of those will be planting my seedlings into these bulk bags and watching them grow. I'll see you soon.